It's early 2018 and a new game called Fortnite is getting a lot of attention. It revives during that time the unpopular battle royale genre and becomes a new trend. In addition to its great success, it solved one of gaming biggest wars, at least for itself. The so-called console wars. It didn't end the war, but represented an all-time solution by simply letting every platform playing together without any exclusives. With this action, Epic Games silenced the war for a short time and showed many players how unnecessary this war is. When Battlefield 5 was released in late 2018, probably the biggest FPS war, the war between Battlefield and Call of Duty had been silenced for a while. Due to the recent disappointment of Call of Duty with Black Ops 4 and Battlefield with their newest title. As the time went on, many and many more gamers laid down their weapons and stopped fighting against the rivals of their beloved titles and focused on hating the game that turned the industry into a loveless business model that has become today. It was the typical the enemy of my enemy is my friend phenomenon. Not all but many people started to respect each other and their opinions like never before. For many people the argues became meaningless. For a time, gamers around the world knew the illusion of peace until a new enemy emerged. An enemy that would change online gaming into the biggest mess and split the gaming community far worse than we have ever seen before. An enemy that would wipe out the meaning of online gaming. On May 30, 2019, Call of Duty revealed their new upcoming title, a reboot of the fan-favorite Modern Warfare series, with same characters but a different story. They included their newest game engine and put lots of effort to details and improved the dynamic of their game to a very high standard. It looked amazing and many gamers were hyped. As soon as it released though, many players were upset about the game being too noob friendly. Besides the poor map design and the bad gameplay choices, there was another problem integrated to the game system. A system that would cause the largest debate in online gaming. The so-called skill-based matchmaking caused mayhem in the community and splitted it. Where people once happily played together no, go, oh hey, you got nuts, right? You a nigga, right? More or less, they suddenly went on each other's throat. One side fighting against the strong implementation of SPMM in public lobbies, while the others are fighting to keep it in. No other topic has ever driven the community as much apart a skill-based matchmaking. Stop We're our own man. It turned into such a large debate that even other communities from different titles got involved. Now this video won't be about the typical debate and explanation that you all, including me, are sick and tired of. This video is gonna tell the whole damage caused by Activision and will tell you much more about the consequences that many people don't even mention. SPMM is much more than just a matchmaking system. Now, before I go deep into the video, make sure to like and subscribe in order to support me and not to miss any further content. Enough begging, let's get started. I think the majority of you already know what skill-based matchmaking is. Hmm? But for those who have been living behind the moon, for some reason, or are new in the industry, welcome by the way, I tell you very quick what you need to know. Skill-based matchmaking is, as the name says, a system that creates a match by the skill of each player. The system collects data of the playstyle from every gamer and puts only similar skilled players into a lobby. Meaning, pro player play against other pros and noobs play against noobs. It doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it creates a kind of balanced match and everyone is happy, right? Well, that's the problem the communities have. One side 
which majority consists of lower skilled players, are defending the existence of skill-based matchmaking by saying they don't want to get annoyed by sweaters in public matches and want a balanced match, while the highly skilled players are desperately trying to convince the developers to remove it by saying it only belongs to competitive matches and not in public matches. Now, listening to all arguments would take hours. I rather skip this waste of time and focus on one simple question. An action that we all do before playing. And that is turning on your device. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, why do you actually play these games in the first place? What's the reason you decide to start up the game at that moment? What's your motivation behind it? Well, obviously, you all will say, to have fun of course, but what do you understand behind the word fun? You see, I for example, I just care about enjoying the happening in the game. It isn't just about winning, it is also the random and funny moments that happen in the matches. Besides that, I always have a goal. I want to achieve something, like a high streak or an achievement for example. And by doing that, by spending time in the game, achieving my goals, I start to get better in the game and develop some kind of performance I try to keep in the game. Many of you probably share the same. Now, here is the problem of the pro SPMM players in the community. Their majority would accuse me of being a sweater, that it is not fair that they would face me in the match because I spent more time playing. The lower skilled players have a less impressive performance by playing against me and therefore become upset. The most common argument of the pro SPMM players is that they want to win a game as well, that they want to achieve a great performance for their level as well, that they just want to enjoy the game with very few struggle as well. But here is my question now, if you accuse my kind as sweaters, does it not make you like lower skilled sweaters as well, if you value a good performance too? And here is my first point why skill-based matchmaking is a f***ing curse in public gaming. Skill-based matchmaking completely destroyed the true meaning of gaming. Because now, people only focus on players' performance and their skill. Many players don't play the game anymore for the happening. It has now completely turned into a competition. You see that in the sweater lobbies and in the noob lobbies. We already have that problem when high-level players are mocked when they troll or just enjoy the game and give a f about KD for example. Now it's like everyone is playing in the game like their mother's life is depending on them. It makes sense when you play competitive matches, but it's absolutely BS in public. It's totally ridiculous. Now. I'm totally aware by the fact that many pro SBMM players hate me now for saying this, that I don't care about them at all and wouldn't allow them to have a good time. But that's simply not true. Every skilled player was once a noob and understands. But in order to have a good time is always depending on you. Just like any other activity, like playing tennis for example. It's about you if you're having fun while playing with experienced people and passively learn by playing. Or rather give up after 3 shots and call a casual game unfair. It is all your decision. And by saying that skilled players don't care about bad players at all, do you really think that the head of development team actually care about them? You need to keep in mind that big companies that have lots of investors behind them are only focused on gaining as much money as possible. Due to the great success of microtransactions shown during prime time of Fortnite, many companies focus on keeping as much players interested to their game as long as possible. Because according to analysts collected over the years, companies earn 3, even over 4 times more money with microtransactions than with the actual sale of the game. Basically, the longer people are connected to the game and play it regularly, the more it's likely that they might buy something from the online shop. And which audience is more likely to buy something from the shop? Exactly, the low-skilled players.
Why? Because this is the audience that can be tricked to over self-confidence by a rigged gaming experience and lured to the shop. The newcomer doesn't know the standards of the game and can be easily manipulated and the low skilled player who often got destroyed suddenly becomes MVP and is filled with unearned proud and therefore very likely to spend money in the shop. The low skilled players are just being fooled and used to squeeze as much money out of them as possible. It was never about the players, it's always about the money. And thanks to skill based matchmaking, every individual has now been downgraded and is only seen as a possible income source. That's the main reason of SPMM being integrated into the casual lobbies and nothing else. And to top it all off with something personal where many people can relate to is playing together with friends. Before Modern Warfare got its hype with Warzone in February or March in 2020, me and two other friends that I only knew from Xbox Live played a lot of Battlefield 5 together. We loved the Pacific update and we were hyped for the next upcoming season. As soon as Warzone got its hype though, things started to change. We all gave the game a try. I liked it, but got instantly bored after my first win and therefore went back to Battlefield 5. One of my friends though, who never touched a Call of Duty before, was addicted to it and was even convinced to buy the whole game. When he started playing, he told me and the other friend how good the multiplayer was and how he dominated in the lobbies like never before. During that time, I knew about the strong SPMM in the lobbies, cause I bought that game on October 25 right on release and I knew that my lobbies were pure cancer compared to his. After that conversation, I haven't heard anything from him anymore. Four and a half years of dead silence. My other friend bought an Xbox Series S with Game Pass back in 2023 and tried MW2 after skipping all Call of Duties after Ghosts. He got used to the SPMM lobbies and tried to convince me to play with him. I agreed, but when we finished the fourth round, my friend was fed up and told me that he struggled playing when he played with me. After that day, he wasn't interested to play with me anymore. He realized that due to our different skill level, the lobbies got harder for him. Same as the other friend, I haven't heard anything from him for around 18 months. Skill-based matchmaking is ripping friendships apart and passively forcing every player to play alone. Besides that, you can't really make new friends due to the recreation of your lobby after every match. I will probably never be able to play a normal like ping based matchmaking game with my friends anymore. The communities have been so much divided that every new game that releases is being confronted with the same question. It's not about how many guns and maps are in the game. Does it have too many bucks anymore? No, no. The first question is always, does it have skill-based matchmaking? And as soon as people get the answer, the argues start all over again. Best example, X Defiant. As soon as it was confirmed that it only allowed skill-based matchmaking up until rank 25, lots of people were upset and many didn't even give it a try. Back in the days, the argues started about balance guns and maps a couple of weeks after release. Now many turn their backs before it's even out. How is this supposed to be undone? SPMM is such a big topic that we'll never get rid of even when it has a compromise between two opinions, just like X Defiant. They offered public matches with SPMM until you get used to the game and even a competitive playlist. Despite this generosity, many people declined anyway. At this point, I just want to thank Activision for the best new integration they ever brought to online casual gaming. I thank you for the boring experience I had with Modern Warfare and the 80 bucks I wasted for such a trash game. 
I thank you for ripping all these friend groups apart and I thank you for destroying the true meaning of casual online gaming. Your greedy decisions were definitely a blessing in the genre. No other topic was even as controversial as this one. Despite being a very optimistic person, still having hope for some changes in the future, I have to admit that I don't see any easy solution for the future. Either the developers remove SPMM or everyone has to get used to it. And those who won't, well, they will be forced not to play anymore. Whatever happens in the end, its destiny is unfortunately decided by money.